Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm Rudy McLennan, coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. The United States has announced that talks are underway to negotiate a new ceasefire in Gaza and the release of further Israeli hostages. However, Hamas maintains that any agreement would have to include ending Israel's attack on Palestine. Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh travelled to Egypt on Wednesday to meet with Egyptian officials tasked with mediating the new ceasefire. Israel began its campaign in the Gaza Strip to eliminate Hamas following a raid by its fighters on the 7th of October, in which over a thousand were killed. The Gazan Health Ministry has reported around 20,000 deaths. Meanwhile, the Christian advocacy group Aid to the Church in Need estimates that 90% of residents of the Christian villages in southern Lebanon have left their homes due to fighting between Israel and Hezbollah militants. In his Christmas greetings to Vatican staff on Thursday, Pope Francis focused on the concepts of hiddenness and littleness. The Holy Father said God hides himself in the littleness of a newborn child. The Pope asked Vatican employees to witness to Christ in their interactions with co-workers by acting in a spirit of gratitude, serenity and humility. He went on to say that the nativity scene invites people to have a simple heart and that even in the hidden and invisible moments their labour produces fruit and the perfume of joy. Meanwhile, Cardinal Pierre Battista Pizzaballa, who is the Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, has urged Christians to look beyond the current tragedies and heed the Christmas message of love, peace and reconciliation as violence continues to wreak havoc and kill people in many places around the world. Bishop Robert Barron, who is the chairman of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops Committee on Laity, Marriage, Family Life and Youth, has stated that the Church's teaching on marriage remain unchanged. He was responding to concerns regarding the Vatican's recent publication, Fiducia Supplicants. He said that marriage is a lifelong commitment between a man and a woman who are dedicated to one another and open to having children. Bishop Barron explained that the Vatican's approval of the informal blessing of non-traditional relationships is intended to highlight the grace of God and assist those involved in their healing guidance and strengthening. At Charles University in Prague, a student killed 14 people and left over 20 injured on Thursday in the country's worst mass shooting in decades. According to police in Prague, the shooter was also killed. That morning, the shooter killed his father and is suspected to have also killed a man and his two-month-old daughter on December the 15th. The Czech Episcopal Conference has expressed shock over the shooting and offered condolences to the victims and to their families. The police said they do not suspect any connections to extremist ideologies or groups for the massacre. A Catholic women's college in Indiana has reversed its recent decision to admit biological males to the college if they identify themselves as women following a public outcry. Earlier, St Mary's College in Notre Dame had approved a new transgender-friendly admissions policy for the college, which allowed students who identify as women to attend the college. This policy received a backlash from the public, including Bishop Kevin Rhodes of Fort Wayne, South Bend. Subsequently, in an email to the college's community, college president Katie Conboy said the university is reverting back to its previous policy, which only admitted biological women. Soon, Oklahoma might become the first American state to ban diversity, equality and inclusion, or DEI, initiatives in public education. Ryan Walters, who is the state superintendent of public instruction, declared that his office will propose measures to discontinue drag queen related events, DEI programs and funding and staffing for these programs in K-12 schools. At the monthly meeting of the State Board of Education, Walters also presented new rules, one protecting prayer in schools and another that would amend performing in drag after work hours. Walters' plan to ban DEI comes a week after Governor Kevin Stitt issued an executive order criticising DEI projects on college campuses and in state agencies. The United Nations will inquire into reports that Taliban rulers in Afghanistan are letting girls attend Islamic religious schools. In her address to the Security Council members on Wednesday, UN Special Envoy Rosa Otunbayeva shared evidence of girls attending madrasas or religious schools. She said she was not aware if there is a standardised curriculum that allows modern education subjects nor of how many girls attend such schools. She urged global leaders to change their policies toward the Taliban regime that has been governing Afghanistan for the past two years. 
According to Students for Life of America post Roe v. Wade, Christian schools increased abortion support by 10% in programming and public statements. According to the study conducted by the National Pro-Life Group in 767 Christian colleges and universities, 1 in 10 Christian schools maintain some relationship with Planned Parenthood and the abortion industry. Nearly half of the infractions overall were of Christian schools referring students to Planned Parenthood as a health resource. Meanwhile, eight Christian schools removed ties to the abortion industry after initial contact with researchers. Chow Hang Tung, who is a pro-democracy activist and lawyer from Hong Kong, has been denied bail ahead of her subversion trial under China's national security laws. Her lawyer argued that she should be released on bond as she had already spent over two years in detention. But the High Court refused the petition, citing concerns that she might compromise national security. Chow's trial is set to begin in late 2024 and she faces charges of incitement to subversion, punishable by up to 10 years in prison. A report released by the international non-governmental organisation Amnesty International accuses the Myanmar military of arbitrarily detaining civilians and looting valuables after their 2021 coup. The organisation also documented the use of banned cluster munitions in northern Shan state. Matt Wells, who is the director of Amnesty International's Crisis Response Programme, said the military has a blood-stained resume of indiscriminate attacks with devastating consequences for civilians. The group noted that the hostilities escalated in October following Operation 1027, an attack launched by three ethnic armed organisations on military posts bordering China. Wells also said that nearly three years after the coup, the suffering of civilians across Myanmar shows no signs of easing. Iran's foreign ministry has summoned the German ambassador Hans Udo Mozel to Tehran to express their disapproval over a court ruling that suggested the Islamic Republic was involved in an attempt to attack a synagogue in Germany last year. This came after a German-Iranian man was found guilty of attempted arson and was sentenced to two years and nine months in prison. The court concluded that the man threw an incendiary bomb at a school near a synagogue in the western city of Bochum. Although the man claimed innocence, his association with a former Hells Angels member made the German court conclude that Iran was responsible for the man's actions. The Christian Broadcasting Network, also known as CBN, has released the animated version of the first Christmas superbook in British Sign Language. Alyssa Lati Allen, who is the network's UK director, said their vision and mission is that every child gets the ability to hear the gospel in their own language. Christian Disney artists created the animated series for CBN. Although the series had already been translated into several languages, there was no version for the deaf. This realisation inspired Alyssa to do something different for the deaf community. She has also said that she hopes to do episodes for visually impaired people too. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again next time for more. And do remember in the meantime you can also visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.